This is a heartbreaking time for all of us at Children's. We've been working to make our operating rooms safe to prevent aspergillus infections. To date, we have not been successful. I want to share some historical context and provide you the latest updates on our work. But I need to start by saying I'm sorry. First and foremost, I want to apologize to our patients and our families who have been directly impacted by these infections. This is simply devastating for them and for us. You are extraordinary kids, courageous families. We let you down, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all of our patients who depend on us and have been impacted by this. I'm sorry to every mom, dad, or caregiver who has placed their confidence in us. I am sorry to our community who has trusted us and stood by us for 112 years. And I am sorry to our team whose sole focus every day is to be here to make a difference for our kids. My job as CEO is to make this right, fix the problem, and get back to what we do best, taking care of our kids and families. It's important to understand how we got here. As you know, we have had seven aspergillus surgical site infections since the summer of 2018. We are deeply saddened that one of those patients died. In the interest of transparency and to acknowledge all of the patients and families who have been directly impacted by these infections, I want to share some history with you that is relevant to the solutions we are outlining today. We have had other aspergillus infections over the past 20 years. Between 2001 and 2014, seven patients developed aspergillus surgical site infections. Tragically, five of those patients died. At the time, we believed that these were isolated incidents. We now believe that these infections were likely caused by the air handling system that serve our operating rooms. Looking back, we should have made the connection sooner. Simply put, we failed. As CEO, I hold myself and children's to a higher standard. And more importantly, so do you. It's with this broader context that I want to share how we are addressing these incredibly important challenges. In May of this year, after we identified three new aspergillus infections, we commissioned a new air handler and as well as the development of in-room HEPA filtration in all of our operating rooms. HEPA is an extremely effective filtration system that removes 99.97% of particles from the air that pass through the filter. This is the highest level of filtration found in operating rooms today. In addition, our new state-of-the-art air handler has been designed and fabricated over the past several months. It was completed last week and will arrive on campus this week. We are also ordering a second new air handler for redundancy as we go forward. Because both of these improvements to our systems were custom built, we knew that it would take months to design, permit, and fabricate. In the meantime, during our latest shutdown, we decommissioned the air handler that was working at the time, switched to a secondary system and enhanced that system. We instituted regular air testing and worked with our local experts to define criteria to reopen our operating rooms. Based on the information that we had at the time, we opened our operating rooms in July, since we believed it was safe to resume care and performing surgeries while implementing our plan and our ongoing monitoring. Since, op op sorry. Since opening the operating rooms on July 4th, we had performed over 3,000 surgeries and continued to do our regular and frequent air quality testing. The air tests were reassuring that we continued to be safe. Clearly, this latest infection that we discovered last week proved that we must go to a higher standard, and we have to do it now. I have made the decision to temporarily close most of our operating rooms until the end of January to complete these comprehensive improvements. These ORs will remain closed until these enhancements are fully in place. The temporary closure of most of our operating rooms will allow us to accelerate our improvements in the most efficient way. 
We are continuing to engage with our external experts to make sure that we are doing everything possible for the safety of our care. And we're doing more than just making improvements in our air handling system. We continue to work on our rigorous environmental standards, continue to deploy our robotic ultraviolet cleaning system, and we will continuously identify and implement improvements in our systems. We also continue to partner with our local hospitals and health systems to make sure that we can provide surgical care for our patients when they need it. We will conduct a rigorous and thorough review of all of the factors that led to this situation, and we will continue to make changes, including our culture, our leadership, and our systems, specifically how our high reliability systems could better pick up patterns of these very rare but significant events. The plan that I outlined today is the best approach to fix this problem. We are here at Children's every day to do the right thing for our patients and families. We take care of the sickest, most complex kids. We have a critical role in our community, and we take this responsibility incredibly seriously. We never take our community's trust for granted. In challenging times like this, we will come together, commit to get this right, and remember why we always do this for our patients and for our families. I'm incredibly grateful for our patients and families for working with us during this period. I'm grateful for our team for being resilient and staying focused on our mission. I'm grateful to our hospital partners who have helped us through this, specifically Harborview, Swedish, UW Medical Center, Mary Bridge, for helping us deliver care for our kids. And I'm grateful for our community for sticking with us while we get this right. We will do everything in our power to get this right. And we will not stop until we do. That's what our community expects. Most importantly, that's what our kids deserve. And as we talk about technicalities and, and technical systems and micron levels of aspergillus, as a pediatrician, for me, this is personal. This is about our kids. And I am reminded and anchor on this as we go through this of what one of our families asked us when we asked they'd been directly impacted us, what we could do. Their simple answer was work hard so other families don't have to go through this. And we have worked hard, but we've not gotten it right. And I promise to that family and all of our impacted families that we will continue to work hard. We will get this right. 